John Hick, an influential philosopher of religion, has made major influences and contributions in philosophical theology. Most primarily known for being an advocate for religious pluralism, which is recognizing truth in all religions, as well as the tolerance of other religions incorporated into one's own beliefs. John Hick has contributed to many areas in the philosophy of religion. Two of those philosophies were theodicy, which is justifying God with the coexistence of evil, and his rejection of religious exclusivism, which is having one exclusive idea on religion without taking into effect other opinions or ideas. John Hick was born in 1922 in northern England to a self-described traditional Anglican upbringing, Initially studying law in college, he experienced a powerful evangelical conversion to Christianity during his first year of law school. After this experience, he decided to study philosophy at Edinburgh University and later trained for the ministry in the Presbyterian Church of England, where he became an ordained pastor and practiced for several years. Upon the beginning of World War II, his studies were put on hold when he decided to be a conscientious objector as a part of an ambulance unit during the war, rather than join the military based on religious grounds. Upon his return to his studies, he went on to receive multiple doctorate degrees focusing on religion, philosophy, theology, and later theodicy. Also after serving as an ordained pastor, he went on to teach philosophy of religion at Cornell University before serving as the professor of Christian philosophy at Princeton. Hick has also held positions as the H.G. Wood Chair of Philosophy at the University of Birmingham, the Danford Chair in the Philosophy of Religion at Claremont Graduate School in California, and he remains today the Professor Emeritus at Claremont Graduate University. Although remaining theologically conservative during his early teachings, while teaching at the University of Birmingham, John Hick experienced large communities of Muslim, Sikh, and Hindu faiths. He began questioning the idea of one true or correct faith. He states, Occasionally attending worship in mosque, synagogue, temple, and gudwara, it was evident that essentially the same kind of thing is taking place in them as in a Christian church namely, human beings opening their minds to a higher divine reality. Hick, who once had a strong fundamentalist idea that Christianity was the one true faith and the Bible was God's sole revealed world, started shifting his faith. He wrote the book, God and the Universe of Faiths. As his life progressed, though, he found it hard neither to justify that a one-faith-based religion was true, nor could he believe that his friends and the people he knew would go to hell because of their non-Christian beliefs. Hick began attending other faith-based, non-Christian organizations, meeting the people, and gaining an understanding of their religion. He began extensively reading other faith-based scriptures outside of the Bible, and discovered just as much good and bad in them. He began arguing that religious beliefs were largely decided on where we lived and believed that one's view of salvation is greatly dependent on where you were born. Another quote from Hicks states, Can we be so entirely confident that to have been born in a particular part of the world carries with it the privilege of knowing the full religious truth? He also sought to challenge traditional evangelical beliefs that one needs to hear a certain message in order to be saved. Hick also started moving away from the supposed correct belief and moved closer towards correct living. Later explained that all salvation is the work of God. He also began to see the world's religions as culturally conditioned contexts and saw how people can grow both morally and spiritually in other religions and promoted the idea of understanding people and their religions rather than trying to convert them. He also believed that any contact with people of other religions should always be positive. In his book, An Interpretation of Religion, Human Responses to the Transcendent, he introduces what he's most well known for, religious pluralism. He had shifted his emphasis from God to the actual perceiver. Hick also acknowledges the philosophies of Immanuel Kant and Ludwig Wittgenstein as being influences on his own philosophy, by examining how knowledge is something conditioned by our own way of seeing things or based on our perception.
definition of religion, Hick revised his earlier beliefs and concepts of God to a belief in an ultimate reality, or the real. This is how we experience God personally, or in faiths where God does not hold a persona, an overall sense of God, or an ultimate real. This, Hick describes, is the reason why we have different faith-based traditions. Just as we have different styles in music and art, there will be different styles of faith. The fact that people were experiencing this reality challenged the one faith outlook, or religious exclusivism, which is something that Hicks started out believing and preaching, and then later rejected in his philosophies. There are many forms of religious exclusivism in Christian and non-Christian faiths. Religious exclusivism believes that only one religion is true, and that all others are not the true religion. It can also be the organizing of groups by excluding those that believe in another idea other than your own. The two forms of exclusivism are absolute and relative. Absolute is the belief that one religion is the true religion and all other religions are an error. You have to be born into the religion to be a true adherent. An example of absolute would be Judaism, although Judaism also allows formal conversions to the faith. Another form is relative exclusivism, which also is the belief that there is one true religion, but that being a part of the religion is mandatory for salvation. Examples of this would be Christianity and the Islamic faiths. Christian exclusivism is the belief that Jesus Christ is the elected Redeemer of God and that it is essential to believe in Him in order to be saved. Therefore, entry into heaven is confined to Christians. In Islam, or the Muslim faiths, a similar view is observed. Although Muslims do recognize Jesus, they believe that Muhammad is the last known prophet from God, that also converting to Islam is the means to salvation. These are a few examples of religious exclusivism that Hicks studied and debated based on his belief in religious pluralism or the acceptance of all faiths. There is also the consideration that all faiths do not see an eternal reality as an infinite person. Examples of this would be Buddhism, Taoism, and Confucianism, which have somewhat indefinable traditions, philosophies, and beliefs. This leads to Hicks' views on theodicy, or the justification of God. Theodicy is described as being the combination of philosophy and theology in an attempt to justify the coexistence of evil and God. It is also the attempt to understand the nature of God through reasoning alone, whereas theology tries to understand God through faith. The objective of theodicy is to find reasoning behind God, allowing suffering and evil to take place in the world. Hick's explanation for this is that God, while believed to be a divine entity by some faiths, could also be indescribable. God, who not only is personified because we can only comprehend as such, but God is a personal experience, meaning that God cannot be defined as an infinite person, but rather an ultimate reality, also described as a connection that everyone has through our thoughts, emotions, and spiritual realms. interacting or intervening in our lives is that the interaction in our human experience would be counterproductive in our own freedom, personal, and overall spiritual growth, the type of growth that would come with human suffering and experience. Hick, knowing that this would seem religiously unsatisfying to some faiths, explains further how all religions have evolved from human experience and traditions. Therefore, one religion cannot be categorized as being the one true religion. He also describes how religions can be different, conflicted, and distorted, but become our own sense of ultimate reality. Differing religions and theologies may be correct that perhaps they are all useful in enabling us to make our journey through life. Hick quotes from medieval